from his home in St. George, Utah. Please welcome Sean Bradley to the Tamron House Show. Sean, the applause is almost as loud as it was when I would watch you walk out on the court all those years to the adoring <laughs> fans. And folks are adoring you now for so many different reasons. Thank you so much for joining us. I know that you gave an interview, a print interview, um, to Sports Illustrated. This is your first television interview. What was it like sure. last night? What was it like last night getting ready for people to see you? It's one thing to read your words. It's now to see you and hear you tell this story. What was it like last night for you? Well, I tried to I tried to prepare today like I would for any competition that I that I've been in in the past. I think I've been prepared for for certain things, and and uh, I just I'm honored that you would even have me on your show, and I look forward to talking to you for the next little while. But uh, uh, I'm not I'm not saying things are always super happy, but you know it was a little difficult thinking about what message I want to share and how I want to come across. But at the same time, I'm just I'm grateful to be here. I'm grateful to be alive. I'm grateful to be speaking with you and, and sharing this sharing these moments. And there have been so many. I know that after the accident, you said or you compared being paralyzed to having a death in the family. Take me to those words and what when you say that. Because as you pointed out, you're grateful to be alive. Absolutely grateful to be alive. But at the same time, there, you know, I was a professional athlete. I would go to the lake with my wife and kids and we'd water ski or we'd ride horses on our ranch or, or just play, you know, roughhouse in the backyard. That, that life in, in, this, in the way it was is gone and it's, and it, it's, it's dead now. And so, like like a death in the family, that's that's no longer going to be around. Um, and so, what is it that we can do to, or what I can do, or my family and I can do to to bring value and, and to have the same opportunities and, and excitements that that we used to have? I know much of this interview will be about the future and and where you are now in your life in this year first that you've experienced. But I do want to know what you remember about the accident. You were on a special bike um, because of your height. You know, one of these fun facts about Sean Bradley, he's one of the tallest to ever play the game of basketball at the position of center. So your history making height was always something that made you formidable. You'd start biking recreationally, as I understand. That's correct. So when I retired from basketball, I needed something to do to, to stay in shape. and so. I contacted a, a bike company and they, they made me a custom bike and I, and I started riding and I loved it. And it was a way that I could work out, that I could, you know, clear the head, that I could have, you know, workout therapy, if you will. Um, and it was, it was a, a passion of mine. I'd go on long rides, I'd go on short rides. It was something that I could do super intense or, or not so much, but uh, um, I, I really enjoyed being able to do that. And that particular day, it was a beautiful, you know, sunny afternoon. My wife Carrie and I decided I'll go on a bike ride. She'll go on a run. That was, that's her, you know, exercise therapy. And uh, unfortunately, an hour and a half later, everything changed. The moment you realized everything changed was what moment? Did you feel the impact? Did you were you aware of what had so happened? So when when I was I was literally a block away from my house, just in a cool down. And, and I got struck from the side and behind, and it pushed me into that parked car that you saw on the TV. Um, and I don't remember the impact of hitting the car, but I do remember tumbling through the air and landing very awkwardly. And the first thing I thought of, you know, my dad's in the medical field. I grew up in scouts. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to do a self-analysis. What's, what's working right now? Because something happened. I know something's wrong. Because all I could move were my eyes. I was just looking up at the sky because I was on my back. And... And I was like, I could move with my eyes and I was having a really hard time breathing. It was like a horse was sitting on my chest, but I'm like, okay, I can continue to breathe. I think I'm going to be okay there. I can move my eyes. And then luckily someone was in the car. She happened to be a nurse. She said, are you okay? I said, call 911. Do you need me to call 911? I said, yes, yeah, something's wrong. I can't move. And then someone else was right there. And I said, please call Carrie. 
and I told her my phone number or told her phone number and so they could contact my wife. I needed her to know what had happened and that that I I didn't know if that was gonna be my last moments. Oh. To be honest. I, I, I didn't know if I was going to slowly pass away there on the on the on the pavement or if I was gonna gain function again, if I was gonna be able to move and I, I desperately needed to talk to my wife, um, the love of my life. I, I, I just wanted to make sure that I had some communication with her if those were my last moments. Next, how the power of that love has helped Sean persevere as he faces his new reality. As we continue the conversation with Sean, his wife and children will join us as well after the break. And we are talking exclusively with NBA veteran Sean Bradley, who became paralyzed after he was hit by a car while riding his bike in January 2021. This is Sean's first television interview since that awful accident. And his wife, Carrie, who has taken on the role of caregiver, joins us now. Thank you both for being with us here. Carrie, thank you so much. You know... <clears throat> Full disclosure, you know, the plan was for me to travel to meet them in person. That didn't work out, but I one day I'm going to come in that kitchen because I love the signs, be the change. I love, I love us, and I love your story, Carrie, and how you've been there for him. Take me back to, Sean said he's there on the ground. He can't move anything. His eyes, there's a nurse there. He says, call 911 and call my wife. You'd been jogging. When you got the call, what did they tell you? You know what? Actually, I didn't pick up the phone. It um, it called. There was a, a random number that called three times, and um, and typically I don't pick up numbers that I don't know. Um, luckily, one of my best friends lives next door, and she had seen what was going on. Um, a cute neighbor of ours had had passed by and gotten her, and so she came over and knocked on my door and told me um, we heard the sirens and. You know, we're kind of cheesy. We said a little prayer for whoever was, was in the accident. And all of a sudden, we get the knock on the door that it was Sean. And honestly, it didn't register. He tends to get injured a bit. So we, <laughs> we thought that, you know, OK, we'll go down. We'll check it out. We'll see what's going on. I didn't really didn't really dawn on right, us. Right, because this no, is not like, in your frame of mind. He's an athlete. This guy has been on the court. You fall, you get up. He knows how to take the hits. And he's a big man, right, on the on the court. So you get the call. You don't you don't know the severity of it. When you realize, when reality becomes reality, Carrie, what was that like for you? When reality hit, I mean, of course, it was a oh my heck moment. Um, yeah, we just I think it 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 took a couple days to actually process and sink in. Um, I don't know if it was adrenaline. I don't know if it was a blessing that it didn't all hit at once. Mm. Um, so we could just kind of process it and figure it out. I know when my son saw him laying on the road, um, he typically doesn't cry. He lost it. And his friend came and picked him up. And, you know, meanwhile, we're trying to keep it quiet because we don't know what the outcome is. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know how severe it is. But obviously, when I got to the hospital and saw the trauma team and everybody in that room, and, um, yeah, it, it started to sink in. But it wasn't really for a couple of days that it sunk in and, like, oh, my gosh, our life has just changed completely again, you know? Well, I know that you both are, are people of faith, and you've done philanthropic work, Sean, throughout your career and together as a couple. I've had people tell me when they are in these moments in the hospital, you can often see the, the, the expression of the doctors and the nurses that, oh, my, as they explain it to you. When they're taking you, Sean, through the fact that you'll be paralyzed from chest down, you made your living, and supported your family. You made a name for yourself with your body. And now that's not the option. Well, when the doctor came and said, you've, you've suffered a spinal cord injury, it's complete. I asked him, well, what does that mean? He says, it means you're not gonna have function from your chest down. Um, and you probably aren't gonna be able to move your arms and hands very well. But, you know, I, I it was a shock, obviously. I, I thought to myself, well, I'm not a person that doesn't have hope, so we're going to have whatever hope we can. We don't want yeah. false hope, but at the same time, we want to make sure 
but together we do everything we can to to overcome this as much as possible. Yeah. I mean, I can move my hands a little bit now. Yeah. I can move my shoulders up and oh, draw some. Yes. These are things that I should be able to do. You know, and so every opportunity that we get, we what we have today, we're going to maximize. And yeah. if we have something new tomorrow, we'll work on that. But we're not going to have false hope. I'm not going to say, like, in a month, I'm going to walk. I mean, miracles happen, but that's not going to happen. So we deal with what we have. We yeah. maximize the best we can, and we move forward together. Yeah. So, Carrie, you know, I mean, you're, you're from everything that, that Sean says about you, you're the ultimate teammate. So now here you are. You are you're on the court with him in a different way because you've been married now for four years. You have three children. You're raising together. This is not what you planned, but here's where you are. How did you put your superhero cape on, if you will, to say, I'm going to be here for this man and, and, and be say, here? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> she never takes her cape off. Okay. <laughs> always had it on. She always has it on. So, Carrie, you know, as I said, you're a person of faith. When you were alone in the room facing the reality of your life, take me to what that was like for you as a mom, as a wife. Of course. You know, everything changes. Um, honestly, we've never, neither of us have ever done normal before. So the first thought that crossed my mind was, why start now? I mean, let's go. And, um, you know, we've both been through some trauma and some different things. And, I mean, immediately, the kids and I, you know, Sean, when he started coming back, just said, you know, this is our path. This is what God wants for us. So what can we do with it? We can, of course, you know, there are times that are hard. And we, we um, you know, we pout a little. And I bang my head on the wall sometimes. And, you know, the private of my closet. But, but. If we can do something good, if we can, you know, at least help one person with this, if we can focus on the positive yeah. um, outcome of this and look for the good in it, then it's really not as scary as it could be, if oh. that makes sense. Yeah, it makes perfect sense.